Hi everyone, I'm Mike Novogratz and this is Next with Nova. This is yet another episode of Next with Novo. I'm here with Tom Sachs and so excited to talk to him about his career and his new NFT project. So Tom, welcome. Thanks Mike, thanks for having me. So Art, like you're my age almost. I'm a, I'm a little bit older, I'm like 18 months older. <laughs> uh, how did you start? I started making art because I wanted stuff that I couldn't afford. I, when I first moved to New York about 30 years ago, I really wanted a Mondrian painting and I went to the Museum of Modern Art and I knew the only way I was gonna be able to get it is if I got into finance and organized money so I could go and buy one. But no offense, I didn't think that was an authentic use of my time. So I went to the Museum of Modern Art and I studied Pete Mondrian's Broadway Boogie Woogie. I got special permission, I looked at the back, I obsessed and I spent more time looking at that painting than the guy who bought it and gave it to the museum. I'm certain just because I committed to that time. And my job is to educate and entertain myself. That's my ultimate privilege as an artist. Anyway, I made my own Broadway Boogie Woogie out of gaffer's tape, not a forgery out of paint, but a model out of plywood with tape wrapped around it. And that was a way of making it authentically mine. I eventually made Hermes Kelly bags and everything I could dream of, including my own space program from scratch. My first mission was 2007 at Gagosian Gallery, Beverly Hills. We went to the moon. So I, I have my own space program. It's real. It's made out of cardboard and duct tape and plumbing and plywood. But we really went to the moon. We uh, built a full-size lunar module. If you look online, there are a lot of assholes who have made their own lunar modules for their backyard, but I'm the only one besides the other NASA that made one without a central column holding it up. It stands on its own four legs like the ones on the other moon. So we, in our art projects, whether it's a Mondrian or a Kelly bag or a Chanel guillotine or whatever we make, we build it to an extreme degree of detail so the experience for us becomes authentic. And we never say fake, we always say other. We never say performance art, we say live demonstration. We even have a swear jar where you have to put a euro in if you, if you don't get it right. It's a way of making it concrete. And it's another way of doing sympathetic magic, which we can get into. So you beat Bezos to space, which I think yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. So the first one was at Larry's gallery in LA. In 2007, 2007. two women walked on Mar on the moon. The first two women to walk on the moon. Right. They brought back a sample. We jackhammered up the, uh, the Richard Meyer floor. We brought back a concrete core to Brooklyn, Muse to Brooklyn College. They did a petrographic analysis and found that the floor of the moon is actually poured reinforced concrete. They did a, <laughs> a whole study. You can go to tomsachs.com and download the report for free and check it out if you want to learn. And your second space trip was where? So that was 2011 at the Park Avenue Armory. Uh, we, we, we were in a space race with NASA to land um, a, a Curiosity rover. Um, in fact, we worked with the entry descent landing team closely and we beat them by about eight weeks to the surface of Mars. We, we, uh, we weren't sure if we were gonna find life there, but, um, uh, and we didn't, so we decided if we weren't going to find life, we were going to bring it. So we planted um, opium poppies and harvested nice. um, opium and distilled it into a very, very small, I think this is the most expensive one gram of opium ever made. Drugs are but a window to what we can achieve through work. I'm a big advocate of seeing in, into other dimensions. And I, I know that um, LSD specifically has really helped me to see into other worlds and has helped me to really appreciate the metaverse because it's a, it's a reality that exists parallel to this one. It doesn't have the same rules, but it exists. And when you go on a trip and you come back, you can kind of say, oh, there are other worlds. And I, I know that Steve had this, Jobs had this experience and it helped him to believe in Apple. And it's for sure the, th the, the one moment in my life that I knew I could be an artist because I, I, I had faith that other worlds that I didn't understand could exist. I have this Puma as my constant reminder and one on the wall of other worlds, right? This was from my ayahuasca journey where I became a Puma. And 
But at the early part of those trips, you literally are transported to other worlds. And you're like, whoa, this is really cool. Uh, some people get really scared. I found it yeah. immensely cool. It, it can be scary. And I, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate for, for safe tripping. Uh, do it with a doctor, so a shaman, a teacher, a witch. Like find your witch so that you don't get into trouble because it can be scary. I've had, yeah. I've had bad trips and um, it's, it's like it's a tool and it's a very potentially dangerous tool and maybe sounds like you had guidance so it was safe. Yeah, it was a very great place, a place called Solterra down in Costa Rica. The importance of this is that as we are talking about metaverse and NFT and cryptocurrency and, and all this, this new world, money is an illusion an illusion by which we all live and die. It's real, but it's totally made up. And it only works because we all believe in it. And I think there's a, as you know, you meet people all the time that give you a ton of resistance of the kind of work that you're doing. I've had this my whole life, whether it's in this crypto space or just, hey, I got this crazy art idea. Let me use words to explain it to you. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And okay, okay. So then I build the damn thing. I build a space program. I'm like, oh, I get it. Or you can buy a pizza or, like you said, you can buy pizza or back rub with crypto. Oh, it's a pizza. I can eat it. It is real on, on my terms. But the biggest challenge is to understand that that other world that is doesn't obey these rules is also real. That crypto space is real. And as that belief system grows, first, it's grown more in young people than old people, but it grows organically and it grows virally. And at one point, I don't know when, five years, 10 years, it's just a thing. It's not even a belief system anymore. It's just the system. Yeah. You know, that you don't have to convince anybody. Uh, As it becomes integrated. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, again, I'm, I'm hoping I'm retired by then, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right, third, our third space pro yeah. project. Yeah. So our third mission was to Europa, the icy moon of Jupiter, where- Very cold. Yeah. Um, it's the smoothest uh, sphere. It's the smoothest object in the known universe. Um, it's, uh, it's got a liquid ocean six times the size of ours. NASA and others believe it's our best chance of finding life not on Earth. Um, we went there um, at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco which is like the best exhibition space in San Francisco. Um, we landed there, we found an icy pool, we drilled through it, we found some shrimp under the surface, we brought them up, we're Americans, so we fished them out, we fried them up, we ate them. Oh, you <laughs> ate the Martians. Yeah, well, Europans. Europans. <laughs> yeah, we ate them, uh, but we ate them in our, uh, in our tea house as part of a tea ceremony. I'm not sure I'm going to send you as our first ambassador on the next mission to find new life. There was a great uh, Twilight Zone, the most one of the most famous Twilight Zones. When the the punchline was, you know, the, this group came down and they were like, "What's the book?" And they were like, "Oh my God, it's a cookbook <laughs> <laughs> to serve Earth or to serve mankind, right? To serve mankind." Yeah, uh, and that's you. All right, so now you're going back. Back to rockets. Let's talk yeah. about this rocket. Yeah. Oh, the my next mission or the no, NFT? No, the NFT, okay. which is rockets. All right. So um, cool rockets. So we we we're, we're the, our white paper is just um, published, so you can you can read up on it in detail. But in general, the idea is fair launch, three thousand parts. Um, so guys, so everyone knows what fair launch is. Tom and his team are broadly giving away, uh, not exactly giving 70%. away. 70%. 70% of the parts to this NFT, you have to put a very small deposit down and then a random number generator will allocate them to whoever wants them. Right. And so you'll, hopefully the community builds up, everyone says, I want some of these parts, I certainly am putting in for them. And you get what you get. Fair launch, it's called. Everyone's got a fair shot. So the, the project's called Rocket Factory. 1,000 nose cones, 1,000 bodies, and 1,000 tail assemblies, each one branded differently with a mainstream brand. You will assemble a nose cone and a tail and a body part, three separate NFTs. But the idea, and I think it's worth saying, so three NFTs, a, no, a nose, 
a body and a tail are combined. And this is the first time that NFTs are combined. So we, the three will be combined into one. Your three will be burned forever, destroyed in place of a singular unified rocket. That rocket will then have a launch window assigned to it. If you choose to launch the rocket, you don't have to launch it. You just keep it as a rocket in your wallet. And then we will, in the studio, build in meat space that rocket, the balsa rocket that you're talking about, decorated, emblazoned with those brands. And we will launch that rocket in space. We will recover it and we'll send it to you. And you'll video it. And, the, and there'll be a video. So you'll have the NFT, the video, and the meat space rocket. These are three, these are not three separate things. They are one. Um, and, and, I, and the thing that excites me most about this is that we're finally authentically bridging the metaverse or the NFT world, the digital world with the physical world, because I'm a physical guy. I'm, my, if I don't have cut, burned fingers, I'm not happy. Um, and making something that can connect. I love that. I, so I, I got a sneak preview and I saw a video of one of the rockets being test blasted off and it reminded me of my youth right the rocket goes up there's a little parachute this rocket unfortunately got stuck in a tree they then have to retreat from the tree uh and you end up getting this rocket that's been blasted uh i love the authenticity authenticity on the nft side because what i've seen is people love to collect and so how are you, you going to i've got part A and I'm missing part B, I'm going to go out in the market and try to buy part B or trade part B mm -hmm. with someone who's got part B and I'll put my rockets together to, to get whatever brand I want. Uh, and I think that collecting piece is what will drive community. I, I hope so. There are a lot, community is very important to me. Uh, my space program is a team of 20 people that work in Manhattan, but there are another 20 people around the world and we gather and we work and go to other worlds. The women who walk on other worlds are the women who built the spaceship with their hands, they're carpenters and welders. And that's an important part of who we are. Same with this, I, the, the crypto community where we're um, collecting and trading parts and being very active in that space is very important. And it wouldn't be authentically me if we don't also do the meat space world um, where I have a community which includes you, Mike, because you're talking to me and includes all of you listeners because you haven't just clicked shut this shut this guy off yet like that's how we we grow community is authentically and when we launch these rockets the owners of the rockets will be welcome to push the launch button oh that's fun yeah you white paper went out yesterday when will the fair launch be no specific dates, but stay tuned. Well, awesome. I think this is gonna be one of the most exciting NFT projects. And I, I said this when I was on Christie's, you know, Tom and Urs Fisher and Damian Hurst, uh, three you know, big artists who sell shit for real money in the real world coming into the space, uh, took a ton of courage, uh, right? The safer play is let everyone else go first and wait to see what works and come in next year. And so I just want to commend you because in all three doing very different type projects, right? Damien's project in some ways is a, is a vote on what do people like better, physical or NFTs. It's like a referendum. Uh, you, know, you buy his dots and his quote currency and uh, a year from now, I think you get a vote, burn it or keep the NFT or, and they burn the physical or take the physical and they burn the NFT. And so we'll see what people think a year from now. Um, Urs just made cool objects and he's going to sell them. We'll see how that works. Uh, he's a freaking cool artist and I liked his objects. I, for one, think the interactivity that you're doing is going to play better with this crowd right now. I'm beyond excited about this. The only thing I was about five years ago, six years ago, I got into ceramics. I'm sorry. 10 years ago, I got into ceramics. Your hair's gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like it's, 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 and I was a newcomer in that world. This feel, feels like I'm a newcomer, but then I realized I have owned every single Apple computer product that's ever been made. I mean, in high school, I had access to the computer lab, but I went to that school. So it was my computer and I've never really channeled my 
art into computers and I've, because I've never found an authentic way to do it until now. And the community based aspect of it is, is the key is that there are real people attached to all of these. And some people are an anonymous and that's fine. It's still a person. Um, and more than anything, the thing that I like about the blockchain is the transparency is that are we, and we've worked tirelessly to make everything on chain. So if we flake out, in six months and completely drop this, this project will live on. It's bigger than us. Your shoes, Nike. Yeah. How did this collaboration start? You're known for it. You know, when I mentioned your name, my son, that was the first thing he said, the shoes. So I met Mark Parker in 2005. We started talking. Um, uh, I, I reached out to them because I needed some plastic parts made. They made the soles of my shoes. They were very, we started a collaboration on, on, on the lunar overshoe, the booty. They made the soles because casting rubber is really hard and they have the stuff to do that. But we negotiated for from 2007 to 2009 going back and forth to find the terms of our collaboration. And we both agreed that we weren't going to collaborate unless both parties could do something that neither could do without each other. And then in 2011, the Mars Yard was born, um, which we made 500 pairs. We couldn't sell them all. Um, we sold them at the Park Avenue Armory. Um, in the end, I had to buy some of them back, and I gave them all away to friends. Um, those are the ones that are really expensive now. And in 2011, we did another launch of kind of like a second version of it, and we've done a few others. And it's the only brand I'm interested in collaborating with because... Um, I like to keep um, focused on sculpture, but I believe that's art like anything else. It's just industrial art, art using a bigger machine with other problems. Uh, it's slower, but the reach is so much broader. Um, also, it's, I think it's fair to say that um, we're professional athletes. Um, my studio, um, our sport is sculpture. Um, and like Michael Jordan, who they make Air Jordans for, make the Mars Yards for us, for our space program. And um, that's the way it has an authentic um, story. And whether, it, whether it's going to another world um, or making something out of wood, it's all our story. Thinking about the NFT space for a while, I didn't really believe in it until I, I fell in love with the CryptoPunks um, space, the marketplace, the whole structure of it, the search capabilities of it. And it took this long working night and day to do something that was authentic because we couldn't just do an iPad drawing, even though I wanted to, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough of a transformation. It wasn't enough leveraging the, the, the power and, and virtue of this space. It wasn't something that uh, like the rocket factory is something that can only exist in this way. And in the same way that when I do collaborations, I, I it's something that each part must, do something that the other couldn't do without. I could not do this project without the NFT space. And the NFT space is something that is, is amplified and accelerated through the, the contributions that we're making, whether it's the three into one combination, which is something that hasn't been done before, or the you know extreme degree of transparency in the blockchain that's it's unparalleled. I think it's gonna be awesome. So listen, we're gonna watch and cheer and participate. And when I have my own rocket, We'll see which one I end up collecting. Uh, I'm going to bring in on Next with Novo and show all our people uh, and show them the video. Uh, best of luck. We're going to be uh, on Team Tom. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Guys, that's another episode with Next with Novo. Thanks for watching.